హలో హాయ్ ఇరవై రెండేళ్ల ఫిల్మ్ కెరియర్లో దాదాపు నూట ఇరవై సినిమాలకు పైగా చేశారు అందులో ఎనభై శాతం సక్సెస్ రేట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ అ జోక్ ఇట్ ఈస్ రియలీ సంథింగ్ వెరీ వెరీ అమేజింగ్ అండ్ ఎక్స్ట్రీమ్లీ గ్రేట్ అంతేకాకుండా అతి చిన్న వయసులోనే కేరళ స్టేట్ ఫిలిం అవార్డు బెస్ట్ విలన్గా తమిళనాడు స్టేట్ ఫిలిం అవార్డు కో ప్రొడ్యూసర్గా నేషనల్ అవార్డు ఆన్ టాప్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ యాజ్ అ డిబ్యూటెంట్ డైరెక్టర్ ఆయన తీసిన ఒక సినిమా హయ్యెస్ట్ గ్రాసర్ ఇన్ మలయాళం ఫిలిం ఇండస్ట్రీ టిల్ డేట్ అండ్ నౌ హీస్ కమింగ్ విత్ ద గోట్ లైఫ్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు సో మచ్ టు టాక్ టు దిస్ బ్రిలియంట్ యాక్టర్ ఈజ్ మల్టీ ఫ్యాసెటెడ్ మల్టీ టాలెంటెడ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ విత్ మీ పృథ్వీరాజ్ సుకుమార్ అండ్ ఆన్ మై ఛానల్ ప్రేమ ది జర్నలిస్ట్ హాయ్ హలో హాయ్ హౌ ఆర్ యూ ఐఎమ్ వెరీ గుడ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ బీన్ వాచింగ్ యువర్ ఫిలిమ్స్ అండ్ యూ ఆర్ సచ్ అన్ అమేజింగ్ యాక్టర్ ప్రతి టెల్ యూ ఐ జస్ట్ లవ్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ బిఫోర్ వీ యాక్చువల్లీ టాక్ అబౌట్ ద గోట్ లైఫ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ ఫ్యూ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ అండ్ ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ క్వశ్చన్స్ అబౌట్ యువర్ కెరియర్ ఇప్పుడు ట్వెల్వ్ థర్టీన్ ఇయర్స్ బ్యాక్ మీరు ముంబై కాప్ అని ఒక సినిమా చేశారు ముంబై పోలీస్ ముంబై పోలీస్లో యూ డన్ క్యారెక్టర్ ఆఫ్ హోమో సెక్షువల్ ఆ రోజుల్లో పదమూడేళ్ల క్రితం ఐ మీన్ అ స్టార్ వుడ్ నాట్ ఈవెన్ వెంచర్ ఇన్ టు డూయింగ్ సచ్ రోల్స్ అండ్ దెన్ యూ బీన్ ఆన్ అండ్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్లిప్ ఫ్లాప్ డూయింగ్ యాంటాగనిస్ట్ ప్రొటాగనిస్ట్ యాంటాగనిస్ట్ ప్రొటాగనిస్ట్ యూ డోంట్ డోంట్ ఫాలో ఇన్ దట్ ఫార్మాట్ బ్రాకెట్ how were you able to sustain so long prithviraj this is like something which is very very astonishing for me no i also think i should thank the heritage of the industry in which i am working mm-hmm. in primarily which is a malayalam film industry i think i we, ha- we have a rich history of uh, great stars actors you know doing very diverse roles and multiple genres and we've always had uh, you know a heritage of big stars doing films that maybe you wouldn't associate as big star films you know maybe not in other industries but malayalam has had that heritage so i should be thankful uh, that that culture is already there in the industry but then also i i uh, at a very young i came into cinema at a very young age you know and uh, i i realized once I, i i decided that okay this is going to be my life that this is going to be my career i knew that i am in it for the rest of my life you know i am not looking at the next 10 years i'm not looking at the next 5 years so when you look at something at such a long term perspective you always want to be in it for you know the actual love of it being able to enjoy what you're doing like when you go to a set uh, you know are you is it giving you happiness and the stardom yeah. and all that in all honesty deep down it may not give you the happiness i'm not judging everyone okay. maybe there are people who find happiness in that that that's all you know something the stardom associated with cinema and everything is something that exists outside of you inside of you is how you feel when you're doing the job that you're doing and for that i i realized that i need to be associated with great cinema yeah. i've always believed that you know as an actor or as a star the way i should be approaching cinema is i should lend myself to a film uh in the best possible manner in which i can facilitate the film so yeah. that way you know now whatever comes to me next if i think the film is great if i think the the script is great and it's a film that needs to be made what i am doing in the film will be secondary for me and among the 53 odd national awards i think uh, 20 plus have gone to the malayalam film industry which is like oh my god i feel like you know yeah. how is how is this happening and as as you said it all falls in place because of the the kind of work that you guys do in yeah. in kerala no i mean we have been blessed to have uh great actors great technicians uh, fantastic storytellers wonderful writers yeah. so that way we we are very thankful i am very thankful yeah, that yeah. you know uh, that is the training ground that i've had to be able to work with such legendary filmmakers and writers and uh, like i said i i'm going to take you back to what i said in the beginning of the interview that that's a heritage that the malayalam cinema has built mm-hmm. and uh, when you exist within that ecosystem it also enriches and refines you as an actor and a technician so recently in one interview you've mentioned that given a chance you would like to do a film like kanthara you you were so amazed with the film yeah, I, in some I, film companion interview i love the uh, yeah yeah exactly i love kanthara yeah. but i feel that you've already done one such kind of a film in your life in your career i don't remember the name of the film there was this theyam art there was this culture there was rooted culture of kerala oh i think you're uh, referring the kalari to pattu I, yeah i think you're referring to a film called veerali pattu i think that was the name of the film yeah i remember murli sir and me uh, murli uncle was yes, playing my dad anand anand brahma oh no no that is aranda uh, sorry ananda bhadram i in, te- in te- telugu i think it was titled shivapuram i think yeah yeah, yeah. Anand, so that didn't have any done 
something no, no, that similar didn't have anything to that. No, no not tayam at all but even the other film you are referring to is not exactly similar to kantara exactly, yeah. yeah no but the the answer to that question was that i was asked for that one year yeah, uh, which yeah. is your which is that one film in the previous year that you were really uh, you you saw and thought wow i would have loved to do it and it was kantara because kantara is just a brilliant film and i really liked everything about the film and in one particular year i think it was in 2015 or 14 i don't remember you've done two films mm -hmm. one film is based the shoot was based in the kashmir yes. and the other one is lakshadweep <coughs> so yes. i think the travel part the, you know on and off swapping and you've told in one of the interviews that you prefer doing one film at a time yeah. you don't like to do many films yeah i time. prefer doing that but unfortunately Mul due to multiple reasons that is no longer happening it's, and it's no longer possible for exactly, me to yeah. because um, one when you're doing multiple languages uh, it is impossible to sort of say okay i will finish one entire film and then say you are involved with the film like salar uh, if you tell yourself that uh, i will just be with salar that means that for 2 years you're just doing that film then there'll be a lo lot many films and filmmakers mm. in in balayalam maybe you know who have made plans and you're, you're waiting for your dates and it's not fair on me to suddenly say no i mean for 2 years i'm just going to you know uh, so that does not ha always happen but as an actor my preference would always be that if i can do just one film at a time that would be uh, i would be more at peace that yeah, way yeah. yeah but how do you do this prithviraj how do you change i mean how do you swap roles like you know no, from this character to <coughs> that character no, i mean like yeah. you have to go here you have to be in this shoot and then again go back there yeah. and then begin be in that shoot change the character no so my exercise towards uh, lending myself to a character is largely and in fact solely based on what is written on paper and the director's vision for that character uh, so i i tend to be one of those actors who pretty much will by heart the whole script before i start a film yeah. Uh, and why i do that is because that is my exercise that is how i get into the character and i i have extensive conversations with my directors like what are you seeing what what are you expecting this character to be like and then of course i add my own interpretation to all that that's called the that's the actor's interpretation i add that to the process and once you in your mind you're set that okay for this character this is what it is i think it almost you know it, like for example while i was shooting salar i was doing many other films but every time i would come back to hyderabad and go to sala set and put on that costume and do the vardraj manar makeup and stand in front of the mirror and look at myself as vardraj manar then oh it would immediately come back to me oh this is this is what i am doing you know so i guess uh, although it's it's not entirely possible to articulate it uh, i think that's a process that most yeah. actors yeah. tend to master as you do uh, many films yeah so do you switch on and switch off very easily does it come very naturally to you or i think i really i think i have over the years mastered that art i wouldn't call it switch on switch off but i've i've been a, i'm usually quite easily able to walk away from a character and a film you know mm. uh, because it's important when you're doing so many films as i am and when you're traversing between so many different characters you can't hold on to one character for you know like too strongly you'll all when you finish one character or when you walk away from one set and before you get to the next character next set it is very important that you leave that there mm. but having said that then once in a while not once in a while once in a lifetime a film like this comes and uh, you know then you're traveling with that one character and a film for 16 years and uh, in cases like this i'm sure it's not going to be easy for me because uh, this has not been one year or two year or six months you know it's been like from 2008 to 2024 in my mind i've been constantly ideating you know regarding this character about the film how it's going to be shot so i've lived an entire phase of my life with this character in one part of my mind so for this one character i don't know i'm not sure that i'm okay. going to be able to walk away that easily yeah but when blessy first approached you you were hardly 25 yeah if i'm not wrong yeah, 25 yeah. 26 yeah. now you're 42 41 41 yeah so in this so many years you must have changed as a person your mind your mentality your thought process everything must have really changed and uh, and when you actually when he narrated the story you were not even that big star you were just you were just in your I'm beginning still not of a big star I'm just you are no, no, you I'm are i think that's being too humble <laughs> anyways so uh, so you you that's that was when he approached you yeah but over the years everything has changed i mean you it's the stardom <coughs> or you know the uh, the visibility and you know the kind of uh, fan following everything has it's like you know it's double tripled it's like become more and more bigger yeah 
So what made you think that you still can continue with this particular script? Or what made Blessy feel, feel that, you know, okay, Prithviraj still is the choice? See, I was, I am as excited as I was in 2009 when Blessy brought this film to me mm. about this film as I am today. That excitement regarding the film, that thrill in me as an actor of being able to pull off a character like this has not diminished over the years at all. That even, let's say, another 30 years from now, if I get another film that is like this, this challenging, you know, uh, I'm assuming that thrill and that excitement will still be there in me. I think that's what sustains an actor. Uh, so for me, it was easy, you know, because uh, I was doing other films, I was doing other things in my life, and constantly I was in my, yeah. the back of my mind, I knew, okay, whenever we are able to, we'll start the shoot of this big magnum opus that we are attempting to, and I'm there in that film. But the real challenge was for Blessy, you know, Blessy never did another film in these yeah. 16 years. He was constantly behind this one film uh, with a laser focus of, you know, I, I have to achieve this with what, with my vision for the film. And only after that will I, you know, step away from it or do another film. Yeah. So more than anything, what led me, what led the entire team is actually Blessy's conviction. It was his drive to achieve what he set out to achieve. And uh, for that, uh, we are all hugely thankful uh, to him and also we are in awe of him. You know, it is incredibly tough to pull off something like this. Yeah. But so many hurdles to this film. I mean, one is the years, 16 mm. years. Then once when you, when you went to Jordan to shoot, there was COVID. You were stuck there. Then you came back, again you went. And in the process, there was this weight reduction, then again putting on weight, again coming yeah. down. So how, all of this, you know, how did you deal with it, Pridharaj? With that, the same kind of conviction, the same kind of focus. Were you never away from the focus at any point of time? No, never. Not even one moment in the entire journey did Blessy or me think that we will give up. Or, you know, that we will, because if you, if you really want to achieve something, at, at least, you know, I mean, no, that's not just for cinema, in life yeah, yeah. in general. If, you, if you, it's something really <coughs> means to you, means, a, means something big to you, then I think you're subconsciously wired as a human being to have that, that drive to, to achieve it. If you do not have the drive, it means you don't really want it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted this film to happen. I really wanted to throw myself at this character and, you know, give it my all. Uh, and it is because I wanted it so badly that I ne never lost focus for what, to, towards what I'm doing. Uh, no, never, not even one moment. And like I said, you know, there is one man, Blessy, the director, mm -hmm. leading the process. And you look at him and you realize, wow, I mean, look at his conviction, you know. Yeah. Uh, if if Blessy had been a little wavering regarding his uh, his conviction towards the film, maybe all of us would have lost focus. Uh, so the credit is Blessy's. You know, not even once did he lose sight of where he wanted to go and where he wanted to reach. And he was the one leading all of us, yeah. including me. Yeah. But but you were in a terrain <coughs> which is not yours. Yeah. You were in a place which you are not aware of, and the situations around were not favorable. So against all these odds, what kept you going? That's my question. I mean, what made you... See, I know this film matters a lot. Yeah. But still, at the end of the day, it again, you know, it zeroes in into your family, uh, yeah. your place in Cochin, you know, your wife, your kids, your parents. So everything keeps running in your mind, right? So It does, but we, it, what also ran in our mind is the very strong belief and knowledge that we are creating something very special, you know? All of us, the crew included, I don't just mean the director or me, right down to the production boy, you know, all of us were deeply in love with what we are creating. All of us knew that we are, this is an opportunity that we have to create something really, really special. And we were in love with what we were making, you know. Uh, every time for all the challenges and obstacles and, you know, hurdles and, and difficulties, every day on set was a joy for us because we knew that we were creating something really special. Mm. So that is what kept us going. And of course then, you know, then there is this incredible subconscious layer of always knowing as an actor that you are enacting somebody's real life, you know? And how challenging must that life have been? Yeah. If this is tough for you, imagine what that man must have gone through. And he fought through. He's alive and well amongst us today to be able to tell his story, you know? Mm. So these are the two big inspirations, I think, that kept us going. Yeah. You said that through the film, you had, there are only two main characters. Who are actually, I mean, 
actually uh -huh. in the in the desert area yeah. and most part of the film was shot there yes. and uh, you there's another guy no there are and more than two characters but it, the film is mostly about this one person this one person's yeah. travel yeah. basically i mean yeah. his internal Correct. struggle a survival yeah. struggle whatever just tell me one thing uh, how do, how do you how do you make it commercially viable when you know you continuously show one person's travel mm. and he's actually doing it in a desert area yeah. with goats so how do you make it so exciting and endearing because the film is narrated in a fashion where it's actually the tale is about the glorious victory of the human spirit mm -hmm. and it is actually when you see the what that man went through in the desert is a 3 3 and a half year long ordeal when you compress that into a 2 hour 45 minute film narrative it actually becomes almost like a fast paced survival adventure so the film and pretty much one pretty much a huge part of the second half is about how he escaped from the desert and it's his journey almost a 7 to 8 day walk through the desert and that is like you know it it to me it really keeps you in the edge of your seat about how will they will they get across you know and they will lose they lose their way in between they lose their sense of direction so for me it is uh, you know it is a most mainstream most commercial story you can say yeah. but of course when you talk about it in terms of conventional mainstream cinema design yeah yeah i mean this is not a film that has action blocks and you know songs in your yeah. conventional sense of the term and all that but i think we have moved away from it exactly. in general i think cinema in general uh, yeah. has moved away from oh this is commercial this is yeah. not commercial i think we have we have crossed that point you know i'm yeah. people today are audience all over the world i think are prepared to look at a film and treat it on its merit uh, not necessarily you know oh th there are no fights or there are no songs yeah, yeah. so it is not mainstream i don't think now anybody looks at cinema that way yeah. so when actually the, the 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 book came the goat life um, how much of the book is reality and how much of the book is little fiction and how much of the film was uh, completely the book mm. and how much was fictionalized so obviously the book is entirely based based completely on completely real so it is yeah. based on yeah. the life someone actually lived yeah. right i mean benjamin the author spent days and months with najib uh, documenting each of his experiences all that he remembered every memory of mm. his and then he added a layer of mm. of the writer's perspective yeah. his take on what the character must have gone through his take on what it must have felt like and of course there is that one layer of the writer in the in the book and very much like that when the book has been adapted into a screenplay there is a layer that blessy has added mm. there is his imagination on how it must have been how it must have felt so on on each of those transitions there is a new perspective coming into it if if it was benjamin the author for the book it is blessy the filmmaker for the film mm. uh, so yes it has that layer of uh, the the storyteller's imagination but at the at the deep insides of the actual story everything is real okay this is everything that you see is something that that man lived through uh, none of this is like none of the events like out of our imagination mm. they are all based on what najib has told us so yes it is pretty okay. much true yeah so other than the visual excitement that you guys have given because i've seen the trailer it is simply superb so other than the visual excitement if i ask you what are those one or two three cinematic liberties that you have taken what are they well in terms of the film i think the most evolved part of the story between the book and the film i'll just i'll not mm. talk about the life yeah. between the book and the film i think is uh, that small portion in the film where you get to see who he was before he reached the desert okay. you know what was his family like what did he leave behind mm. his wife so that area is very beautifully shot and treated in the film and the najib and sainu love story uh, is i think Uh, one area that the filmmaker has lent okay. his vision uh, a lot to mm. so that is one area then of course i mean um, see when <coughs> when you when you talk to najib uh, the most he might say is as i was walking through the desert one day there was a sandstorm now that's all that dan man can say yeah. he is not going to be able to explain the sandstorm to you or he is not going to be able to draw a sketch of the sandstorm from there on it's you imagining oh okay so if how would it have been to be stuck in a sandstorm you know and then it's entirely your imagination yeah. much like when you read the book when you're reading that paragraph you are seeing your own sandstorm right uh, so that's that is always there yeah. but like i said one thing that we should 
not lose sight of the fact is uh, whatever you see, the, the difficulties, the situations, the sandstorm, whatever, all that are all based on a real man's experience. He actually experienced those things. Maybe they were different in terms of visually how they felt or looked, but uh, the real man actually lived through all these circumstances. Yeah. Did you meet him? Of course. Yeah. 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 What was the one conversation that you remember with Najib that really so, stayed back? So I mean, back the most m most touching moment for me of all the things that Najib has told uh, me or the makers of the film is that when he f saw some saw the footage of the film, and he kept saying that you know everything just came back to memory, Ella orma vandu which means like mm. everything came rushing back. Uh, so that you know, as traumatic as it should have been for him, I thought was a huge compliment for the filmmakers and for myself yeah. that when he saw what we created on screen, that he got, suddenly got taken back to his real life means, oh, then we probably made a very honest version of his, you know, his imagination or his life. Yeah. yeah. But now we are in a time and age where there is VFX, the graphics, there's so much, and now the affordability has also increased. Why did you guys think that you know you should do it in a natural area? I mean, in a in a in a Sahara desert or in a Jordan. Why can't so this, you create? This discussion was there multiple times. We've had people pitch the idea of making this a studio film, mm. where you shoot it inside a flow against green screen, or you think of uh, Unreal engines or virtual production and all that. We've had all those discussions, but Blessy always wanted to make this film as real as possible. He always wanted to shoot it in the most organic way, that achievable as possible. Uh, and for that, we always knew we had to take up the challenge of going to these actual locations and braving the elements and shooting in real uh, places with the elements and uh, animals and the actors, all of these factors interacting with each other live. And bless you, always wanted to make the film that way. And uh, see, that's what I said. No? So he never lost focus on that. He never decided, he never even thought of a compromise. Mm. Uh, and that I truly believe you will experience that when you see the film. Yeah. This film would not have been like this if it were a studio film. Even if the technology was amazing or if we had the greatest technicians to be able to make it look as real as possible, I still believe if this was a studio film, it would not have felt okay. the same. Yeah. So from 19 to 22, you shot this film? I mean, 18 these four years. to 22. 18 to 22. Yeah. In this five-year period, did you not do any other film? No, because I didn't. in between, we have seen Janagana Mana. We have I seen did. Of course I did. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, I've, I've done, that's what, even between uh, this, the shoot of the film, I've done other films. Mm. When we had to suspend shoot uh, following the pandemic in 2020, we, we did not even know when we can start the film again. You know, when we, you know, <coughs> left Jordan in 2020, the biggest fear that Blessy and the team and myself, all of us had was, is this it? Will we ever be able to regroup and restart this film? You know, because nobody knew what was on the other side yeah. of the pandemic. Yeah. We didn't know how long it's going to... So when we came back, we could not even plan when, or we didn't even know when. So we are, I did other films that, uh, during that time. Luckily, a year and a half later, the world sort of opened up and regained some sense of normalcy, and then we went back. We went back and shot the film, yeah. So in this five-year period, how did you step back into the other roles? Because as, as you said, it was a weight issue. I mean, you yeah. need to, you were putting on weight, you, were, yeah. you reduced weight. So and in fact, 30 will, kilos. The, for a lot of the films that I did during that time, you will see that I'm much thinner than usual. Because I, I knew that, I always in my mind, I believed we will very soon restart the film. So I did not want to like get back to my normal self completely. So even though I did not maintain the thinnest that I was for RDG with him, I was very careful. I kept telling myself, at some point, you'll have to redo, restart the film. So don't put on too much weight. Don't put on too much, too much weight. So a lot of the films that I did during that time, you'll see that I'm very slim and thin. And that's because I always had this thought in my mind. Especially Janagana Mana, no? Not just Janagana Mana. Even you know, a film called Tirp and even for some portions of a film called Kadu, I remember the filmmaker asking ah. me, can you please put on a bit more weight? I said, I unfortunately can't because, you know, what if next month we are able to go back and shoot RG with them. So I, I remember telling the director this. You know, the mental strength that you sustained all over the years and, you know, today when you're sitting waiting for March 28th, you know, whatever be the verdict, how prepared are you? No, see, what I hoped to achieve from the experience of making this film, I have already achieved. I have 
had the privilege. So it's just the journey that matters. Yeah, so I have had the privilege of being involved with what I believe, truly believe, is a very, very special piece of cinema. And uh, I'm very happy with the fact that I gave my 120% for the film. There is nothing that I today turn back and think, oh, I could have maybe done that better, or maybe I could have been, I could have given a bit more, nothing of that sort. So as we sit here today, even before the release, I'm truly, genuinely happy in my heart and mind with regards to what uh, RDG with them did for me. So I hope 28th in the film releases, people world over go and watch the film in theatres and they get the same sense of happiness that we now have for having made the film. Uh, of course, it matters if the film works or not. All of us have made the film for that. We have made the film for lakhs and lakhs of people to come and yeah. experience this incredible true life story on, on screens. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, we are also looking forward to it. We really want And did you dub in all the languages? Yes, I did. All, Telugu also? All five, yeah. Wow. You got the proper accent? I don't know. You have to tell me. So, I'm in, <laughs> so with Telugu and Kannada, Telugu now I think I'm beginning to be able to make out okay. what it means and words and all because I've just done a film in Telugu. Yeah. Yeah. Kannada I still can't, you know, so I completely rely on the dialogue coach who sits, for each language I have a separate coach who sits with me in the dubbing console and corrects my intonation, my pronunciation and everything, yeah. Now I can't leave you without asking two, three important questions about your future projects, especially Empuran. We are all waiting for that mm -hmm. because Lucifer is like, it's still in our hearts. Thank you. And, yeah. uh, and, and a great appreciation to you. Being a debut director, you've done pull it, pull it off so well. It Thank is an so amazing much, yeah. project. And we are waiting for Empuran. So what is the current status of Empuran? I'm shooting it. As we, the, the shooting is uh, like, I'm in the middle of the schedules of Empuran. I, I finished a schedule, one schedule in North India. Then I shot in the UK for one schedule. Then I finished a schedule in the US. And uh, now I'll restart as soon as uh, RDG Utham releases, uh, I'll restart the shoot. You did a cameo in Yeah, my, my character does exist. In, exist. Yeah. Okay. What about, uh, what is that, Vilayat Buddha? Vilayat Buddha. Yeah, yeah so that, that's the one film that I need to get back to because it was while shooting for Vilayat Buddha for an action sequence of Vilayat Buddha yeah, that I, I met with an accident. An and uh, I had to do a surgery for my knee. And uh, the recovery process of that surgery is actually 12 months. The doctors have told me that don't get back to doing action and stuff mm. for 12 months. So I'm in the ninth month now. So as soon as I'm, I get the license from the doctors, I have to finish that film also. Yeah. Then Salar too? Yeah, that we are starting very, very soon. So, yeah. I'm, I can, actually, you, can, you, can you give some important information about Salar too? Obviously, I cannot. You? <laughs> Little bit which you haven't revealed anywhere, if I mean, you I'm, want to know. I'm, 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 just, can, I'm just saying that Salar... To what extent at least? So, I mean, Salar, I suppose, was a lot uh, about who Deva is and all that and you just get an introduction of pretty much an introduction of cancer and yeah, what is happening yeah, in that yeah. in that kingdom salar 2 you will i think have a lot more clarity about cancer and what that place is about and most importantly salar 2 is almost entirely about these two people what mm -hmm. happens you know between them how did uh, the best of friends become the worst of enemies is okay. what Salar 2 is about. Because the, the, when the film started off Salar 1, the first half an hour, 40 minutes was like, you know, it was very difficult to understand the names, you know. Yeah, no, I, I, I know everything. it's a, um, so imagine when, when I first listened to the narration, Salar 1 and 2 together was one film. And I remember yeah. telling Prashant that it's just too information dense. You know, I don't think people, there's too much happening at very fast pace. Yeah, yeah. Even when he split it into two films, I know, I realize that part one could come across as too information dense for a lot of people. But I think a lot of what happened in part one or what you saw and heard in part one will also get more clarity when you see part yeah, two. Yeah. Yeah. So how many more antagonist films you're doing? Because I know that you're doing Bade Mia, Chote Mia. Yeah. You're an antagonist. Yeah. And are there any more in the pipeline? No, no nothing that I've said yes to officially. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, Prithviraj, before we end, I have a short rapid fire. Okay. And uh, I'm sure you will enjoy this. Okay. If you can name three directors with whom you wish to work in the Telugu film industry. Telugu industry? Yeah. Um, and a lot of great directors. I mean, of course, Rajamali sir is there, number one. But I don't even know if I can say he's from the Telugu industry anymore. He's like, <laughs> okay. you know, every, he's, he's Indian film yes, director. Indian film. So Rajamali sir, for yeah. sure. Uh, 
I think I would love to work with uh, Trivikram sir. I love, uh, I love his filmmaking. I think he's a very, very good filmmaker. And I had the opportunity once to work, no, no, work with him. But unfortunately, it didn't, my time and dates and everything didn't work out. Okay. Uh, Sukumar sir, of course, Sukumar. yeah. Okay. You did one straight Telugu film, right? Police, Police. Yeah, no, so it was like a bilingual where it, <coughs> it was shot in okay. Tamil and Telugu. <coughs> so Srikanth, the actor, was a friend of mine. So he's the one who, uh, he's a friend of mine, not was, he's a friend of mine. So he's the one who told me, let this film do it. And it was like a, yeah. uh, I think a lot of people in Kerala think it was Tamil. Some people think so it was like both languages. Yeah. So you were an antagonist in that also? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Who are the actors in the Telugu industry you wish to direct? They're all really good, yeah. I mean... <sighs> At least two, three names if you can. Uh, Prabhas. We might do something. Mm, mm. Uh, Tarak, Ram, Alu Arjun, Mahesh Babu, Chiranjeevi sir, you know, uh, Balashna sir. Uh, oh. In fact, I would love to see Balashna sir in a very. He does these big scale commercial, large scale films, you know. So, I actually, some, I've had this discussion very recently. I think I would love to see him in a very real uh, film. Okay. Like, or not like this normal commercial cinema, but in a very real kind of a Malayalam commercial film kind yeah, of a thing, yeah, you know, yeah. like something that something like Bro Daddy. Actually, maybe yeah, maybe it would be very good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. Correct. Okay, one distinct quality uh, I would like to I would like to tell about these people. Now I'm mentioning uh, Fahad Fasil. He's a very close friend. So it's where Fahad is. Uh, I think he, he's got this wonderful ability to sort of shut out the world. I've noticed this about Shanu, about, we call him Shanu, uh, about Fahad, that you know, whatever is the noise around him, as a person, and I'm assuming that will also help him as an actor, he's got this really wonderful ability to just shut off okay. the noise. That guy sometimes does not even use the phone. He also has, he still carries uh, a feature phone, like not a smartphone. Yeah. So. Uh, I, he has a smartphone which sometimes he just does not use for days, months, he'll just be with this. So he has this ability to just cut off the world, oh, which is great. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, Dulkar. This is one of the nicest guys actually I have. <laughs> he's just, um, and he's, a, he's actually a really fun guy, you know. I think uh, uh, Chalu or Dulkar to the uh, people who do not know him will come across as a shy, reserved guy, which he is actually. But when he's in a closed group and he's comfortable, he is such a fun guy okay. yeah so you when 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 we ha when he's home and we are just hanging out you know just us the families uh, he's the most fun so yeah finally prabhas oh prabhas is uh, <laughs> uh, the greatest quality about prabhas that i keep repeating is the fact that there is this humongous stardom that he possesses i mean he's one of india's biggest yeah, yeah, yeah. stars and he doesn't know it you know uh, either he does not know it or he's just decided not to acknowledge it. Uh, it will be, it'll, it's impossible to really catch Prabhas in a moment where he is aware of his stardom. He's always that guy who's like, yeah, okay, you know, like that. So that is very lovable about him. Yeah. I think the same uh, applies to you also, Prithviraj. <laughs> I, I have been telling you all the while and you're still saying, oh. No, no I, I'm, I'm in terms of what I've been able to achieve, uh, you know, I'm nowhere near what Prabhas yeah. has achieved and all that. So, there's no comparison. Yeah. Okay. The new age Malayalam actors who you think uh, are really brilliant. Oh, we you have, can name one we have brilliant actors and it's going to be very unfair for me no, to no, I'm pick. talking about the ones who have just come recently, three, four years ago. So, during the, the lockdown, yeah. I, um, I happened to uh, produce and act in a film called Kurudi. So, there was this boy who did a small role in that, that film. During the shoot of the film, everyone I know, I have, <laughs> I have told them that there is this boy, he's a fantastic actor, he's going to be a star. And uh, I'm very happy that I was proven right because that's Naslan. He just did this Premalu. Oh, Premalu. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Your, all, uh, your all time top three performances, if you can name, Mine. among your 120 odd films. Mine. Yes. I cannot. I really cannot. I don't know which are my best. That's for the audience you to say. You will have your own self assessment. No, I can right? only have like films that I have a connection to or a films that I have a soft corner for. My performances, I really do not okay, know. Okay, fine. If you, can, if you can name those. I love films. Ayalam Nyanam Tamil. Okay. Mumbai Police, of course. Uh, then I cannot not say this. Yeah. Good life. 
Okay. The most heart-wrenching moment while you were shooting, mm. I mean, maybe you've got tears or you've become emotional. Could you could you recollect any of such scenes or? Uh, multiple. Because goat life to me, like I know I've said this uh, also multiple times. Usually, when you think of a film, you're able to remember or associate yourself to the film as in that scene, that day of shoot. But this film, to me, even today, seems and feels like one big singular experience that I have lived through. Uh, so multiple times in go, and also the film was shot that way. You know, mm. uh, the director used to tell me that I'll just say roll camera, I will not cut it. You just do what you want to and when you feel like you are done, you raise your hand. So when you are doing a film like that, there are so many moments you sort of lose the fact that you are acting and all that. No? So, so finally, <coughs> one biggest learning from Blessy that you will really take for life, I mean you like, you will live through. Yeah. If you want something, never give up on it, never. Yeah. Uh, one thing that you wish could change about the film industry, I mean Malayalam film industry, and one thing that you wish should not change. So, so one those? thing I, so when I say I wish it would change, it is changing as we speak, is that I've always believed we have not explored, we make great films and then we leave it at that. We make fantastic films and we release it in theatres and that's it. We have not as an industry worked towards cultivating a proper distribution system for our films outside of Kerala and outside of India. For the longest time, till about a couple of years ago, what we used to do was we used to make films mm. and then rest of India we would sell it to somebody who would then sublet it to different people in different cities and rest of the world, outside world also, we would just completely sell it to somebody and take the money and be safe and they would then... So, three years ago if you asked me, is your film releasing in Hyderabad, I wouldn't even know. Yeah. I, I wouldn't even know who's releasing it in Hyderabad. From there, I think we have started realizing that and we have started putting systems in place where Malayalam cinema can reach audiences in other parts of the country and the world in a proper fashion. Okay. And no better example than yeah. The Goat Life because uh, I managed uh, to get Maitri, Hombale, Red Giant and Anil Tadhani to distribute the film. And as I am sitting here in Hyderabad, I am deeply grateful to Maitri, uh, you know, because uh, only one phone call I made, you know, I made one phone call and I said, this film means a lot to me. I would like it to be distributed by a market leader. And they said, it's done, sir. So that kind of faith, that kind of trust means a lot to me. Yeah. So what do you think that should not change at all? About Malayalam, yeah. So, see, we've in the last five to six years uh, gone through a sudden spurt in terms of how much money we are able to spend mm. in a film, how much money our films are making, all that is like exponentially grown. So today we are no longer, we can't sit in a Malayalam film set and say, oh, they can afford that, we can't afford this, but we also have the means and the money to do it. I sincerely hope and wish that as we are, we get more of these liberties in terms of larger budgets and, you know, bigger films, we still do not lose sight of the fact mm. that we were originally very good, yeah. not because of the budgets, not because of the scale or the canvas, we were originally very good because we used to tell extremely evocative original stories yes. and I hope we do not lose sight of that. Yeah. Raj Garu told very, very openly that, you know, Malayalam actors are the best <laughs> in the country, well, coming, coming, in the Coming world. from Raj Mauli, sir, that is a compliment for the entire industry yes, yes. because uh, us as an industry, like everywhere in the country and the world, we hold Raj Mauli, sir, in extremely high regard. Yeah. Thank you so much, Prithviraj. Wonderful talking to you. Wish you good luck Thank for your you so film much. and Thank you. waiting to watch Thank you on so 28th. Much, yeah. <laughs>